G'day, my name is Russ Weekly from Max Design. I'm going to be talking today about accessible in-page tabs. Now this comes from a discussion or two between Roger Hudson and myself. First of all, what are in-page tabs? Well, in-page tabs often include a series of tabs across the top or the sides of a panel. Users can navigate through these tabs and choose tabs as needed. As users choose a tab, the contents of the panel generally changes based on the chosen tab. And here's a diagram showing tab 1, tab 2, and tab 3. Now some definitions. For this presentation, we'll refer to the components as tabs and the panels below them as panels. We're also going to be talking a lot about keystrokes, and when they're written, I'll write them in uppercase, as in tab keystrokes, enter keystrokes, and arrow keystrokes. So what do we mean by accessible? Well, first of all, let's talk about keyboard only. So users should be able to navigate through the tabs and panels as needed using keyboard only. There should be no hidden keystrokes as users move through the component. And for screen readers, page components should be identified to screen reader users as they're accessed. Screen readers should be notified of changes as they occur. Focus should be placed on relevant areas as changes occur. And tabs and panels should have a direct relationship. And for all users, well, the navigation method should be easy to understand for any type of user, whether it's keyboard only user, screen reader user, or even general users. But where do we put the focus for the panels? Before we look at how to navigate through in page tabs, let's have a quick look at where the focus should be placed when we arrive at a panel. A lot of developers either place a focus on the first heading inside of a panel, or they place a focus on the first focusable item inside the panel, like a link, a form control, etc. The problem with both these methods is that we may not know what's going to go inside the panel. So it's more flexible and safer to set the initial focus on the panel itself. This also allows us to announce the panel to the screen reader users. Now let's talk about two navigation methods. There are two main navigation methods that developers have been using to allow users to move through in-page tabs. The first one is called Tab and Enter. It uses the Tab and Enter keystrokes. And basically, you use the Tab keys to move across the tabs and Enter keys to move into the panels. And the second one is called Tab and Arrows. And it uses the Tab and Arrow keystrokes. So it uses the Tab keys to move into the Active tab, the Active panel. And it uses the Arrow keys to move across tabs. We now look at option 1, tab and enter, and this first one is called a straight through pass. So here's our diagram, and currently the link above our module is in focus. If we hit the tab key four times, we'll get tab 1, tab 2, tab 3, and then panel 1. Now if we hit the tab key again, we'll go to any focusable item inside the panel, and then below. Using the same method, option 1, tab and enter, we can look at how you select a tab. So again, we're starting at a link above our module. If we hit the tab key, we'll go to tab one. If we hit the tab key, we'll go to tab two. But at this point, what if we want to see tab two? Well, the only way to fix that is to go enter. And now the uh, panel is showing tab two. But here's the weird part. If you want to move and actually go into that panel, you have to still tab to tab three, tab again, and now you're focusing on the panel, but it's actually panel two. And again, you can tab again to any focusable item in the panel, and then below. Let's look at option two now, the tab and arrow approach. And first of all, we'll do that same straight through pass. So here's our diagram. We're starting on a focused link above our module. The first keystroke, tab, will take us to tab one. If we hit the tab key again, it'll actually take us straight to the panel, which relates to tab one. If we hit the keystroke again, tab, we'll get to any focusable item in the panel and then below the panel. But what if you want to select a tab? Well, this is where we look at option two for tab and arrow. So again, we're going to start at the top. If you hit the tab key, you'll get to tab one. However, if you want to move across, you now use an arrow key. And now tab two is active and straight away, the panel for tab two is active as well. If you hit the arrow key again, Tab 3 becomes active, and the whole of the panel of Tab 3 becomes active. Now we can move backwards and forwards across Tab 1, 2, and 3 using the arrow key. And at any time we want, simply tab down, it'll get to the panel, any item within, and then below. 
So what are the strengths and weaknesses of the two different methods? Well, with option 1, the tab and enter, this method is much more widely used within websites, so it's probably more intuitive for average users. However, the tabs are not directly related to the panels, so users have to travel through all of the tabs before moving to the relevant panel. And what about option 2, our tab and arrow? Well, this method uses a keyboard-only navigation paradigm that's widely used in software products outside of websites. In these cases, arrow keys are used to choose options, not tab keys. There's also a much more direct relationship between the tab and the panel, as they follow directly after each other. However, it's much less common on websites, and some users may not know about arrow keys to move across tabs. What about the markup? Well, some time ago, developers used to mark up tabs as headings, and the panels would be under each relevant heading. So here's our markup, and you'd have an H2 a div, H2 div, H2 div. So in each case, the tab was an H2, and the panel was a div directly below. Most in-page tabs now use an unordered list above the three panels. And here's our example, an unordered list with three LIs, and then three divs. What about adding some ARIA? We can start by setting roles. The first thing we need to do is define a role for each element. What are they and what are their purposes? With the UL, we can put a role of tab list. For the LI, because they're not really used, we can give them a role of presentation. For the A, we can give it a role of tab, as these are the actual tabs. And for the divs, we can give them a role of tab panel. What about properties and labels? Well, next up, we want to define the properties and labels for each of these elements. For our A elements, we add an attribute which is aria-controls. And then the value would be panel 1, panel 2, panel 3. And then it relates down to one of the panels. And they would have an ID which matches. So in this case, panel 1. And in reverse, on our div, we set an aria label by and then a value of tab 1, and that points up to our A element, which has an ID of tab 1. So you can see that we're pointing up and down to reference. And what about initial states? Well, now we need to set initial states for the elements that will change. For our A element, we can set aria selected true for the one that's active, and for the ones that's inactive, we can set them to aria selected false. For our div that's active, we can set them to aria hidden false and aria expanded true. For the other panels, which aren't active, we can set them to aria hidden true and aria expanded false. Now, in all these cases, we can use JavaScript to swap these around. Next up, focus. And what we need to do is set the focus on the relevant elements. So for our A element, we want to set tab index 0 to the tab that's active and tab index minus 1 to the other tabs that aren't active. And again, JavaScript can be used to swap these around as different tabs become active. So let's have a quick breakdown. In our A element, we have an href, we've got role equals tab, aria controls equals panel 1, we've got aria selected either true or false depending on its state, we've got tab index 0 or minus 1 depending on its state, and then we've got an ID, in this case tab 1 or tab 2 etc. And for our div we have role equals tab panel, and then aria hidden equals false or true, aria expanded equals true or false, aria label by equals tab 1, tab 2, tab 3, ID equals panel 1, panel 2, panel 3. And in this case, I've already add, also added a class of panel. But is this all too much? Well, does this seem too much for developers to deal with? The solution is that all these ARIA components, both initially and after change, should be injected into this module by JavaScript. All that should be needed is an initial hook, like a class name, that can be identified by the JavaScript. So in this case, we could have something like class equals tab list. Now that could be put on the UL, but it might also be put on a div wrapping around this whole module. So what's missing? Well, for a start, we haven't discussed the JavaScript that's needed to go into this solution, but that may be too big a topic for now. But what about instructions? If we're going to use non-familiar navigation methods, should we provide instructions that are available to all users? 
Well, we could do something like a tooltip that's injected into the page when the user accesses the first tab. And of course, this tooltip, or whatever it is, could and should be accessible to screen reader users, as well as sighted users. So here's a quick diagram, and it might be something like a pop-up which says, use the arrow keys to move across the tabs. And that would happen only when the user hits the first fo focusable element in that module. Now for markup, we could include two attributes, role equals alert, and then aria-live, and we could set it to polite, or if you want to be a bit stronger, you could set it to aria-live assertive. Well, there's probably a whole range of questions to discuss. The first one is the navigation method. What do you think? Should it be tab and enter, or tab and arrow? The second question is aria. Is all that insane? Does it add value? Yes or no? And instructions, should we have this pop-up tooltip that's read by screen readers as well? Yes or no? Is it overkill? Is it necessary? And what about backwards compatibility? Should we make all this stuff so it works backwards compatible, or just roll forward no matter what? Well, this is the time for you to have your discussion. Thanks for having me in a virtual sense, and hope to see you one day down in the mighty Aussie way.